All right, buddy. Well, I would say somebody threw away everything but the kitchen sink. But there's the kitchen sink. What's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and starting the day off really early. It's uh, it's about 10 after seven. As you can see, we're at the new Mill Creek property because we trapped a boar hog last night. Um, this is probably, I'm fairly certain this is the pig that we missed a few days ago when we caught those two sows. But uh, Josh is fixing to pull up. I hear his truck right now and we're gonna try to get this guy load it up as quick as we can and he's actually pretty darn good size i think he's all alone looking for his girlfriends that's what he's doing he's like i was here just a few nights ago and there was two pretty ladies yep he's all by himself ready to catch him Mm -hmm. That might not have ended well for him. That might have hurt. Got him. He about got his head smashed, though. So as you can see, we had a little bit of a mishap. I dropped the trap while he was probably a little too close to the edge and he just about didn't survive the drop. But these things are unbelievably tough. They're, they're built like an armored tank. And he's fine this morning, so we're gonna pull down here and load him up. Yeah, he's a pretty darn good sized pig. Whoa! God, buddy. Look at this. You think this guy wouldn't hit in the trap hard? He broke my carabiner clip that holds the gate shut. Have to pick up a new one today for sure. Around two, two and a quarter probably. Just because of the shields. Yeah. You got a big old head on him. Mm-hmm. Ain't no nine out of it. <laughs> no. No, I thought we might have injured him or something, you know, when that fell on him, but you never even know anything happened to him. Well, that's a really, really, really good pig to have removed off the property. You can see that's, that pig's probably a little over 200 pounds in the prime of his life. And if there was one that was gonna jump out of this big pig trap, it would have been him and as you saw he's jumping but we've got this rail that jump rail around there and yeah, they just can't jump out i'm not gonna say no pig will ever jump out of this thing but those two big sows we caught really tried hard and this guy really tried hard and uh they were all unsuccessful in jumping out of this thing this trap man 
I'm falling more in love with this thing every day. We're catching all kinds of pigs out here, removing them from the property, which is what we're after. But uh, I'm not going to reset the trap right now because he tore up my uh, my clip on my chain. It's all bent and won't hold it anymore. So I don't want to put that eight feet up in the air. So it's going to be a long day. Got a lot going on. I'm fixing to leave. I got to meet DJ. We got to go to the gym because for some reason I talked her into joining a CrossFit gym and they're absolutely trying to kill us. But we got to be there at 830. So we'll come back reset the trap, put some feet out and do everything later because we're going to be all over the place back and forth between home and here today and uh, a lot going on. So guys, stick around. Good morning, copper. What's up, everybody? You goats want to go graze for a little while? Hmm? Oh, they're awful quiet. Even you, copper. You're awful quiet. Let's go. Come on, goats. Come on, goats. You want to go too, goose? Barry, you leading the charge today? No? Be still, copper. You make a fine bucket holder. Your horns are just perfect if you'll be still. No? Jeez, you gonna be all right? What are you joking on? Come on, let's go. Slackers, you're not a slacker, Copper. You're always at the front of the pack, trying to knock me down. Trying to knock me down, aren't you? Hey, that hurts. Knock it off. Come on, goats and bear. Hey, get out of the bucket. Get out of the bucket. Let me dump out your distraction. Little distraction food. Get out of the bucket. Pepper, you stay in. I'm going to feed you separate. Okay? Come here. Here. I'll give you a little on this stump since you walked all the way out here. There you go. You let me pet you today? I brought you food. Let me pet you. I'm going to touch you on the ear. You ready? Whoop, I touched you. So I'm going to do my morning chores here, take care of all the animals, and uh, run over to the, the Mill Creek property and bait my trap. Packers and Ralph are still way out behind the house grazing right now, so they'll eat this when they get here. That's if Goose doesn't eat it all first. Can't wait for it to fill up, Phoebe. Huh? It'll get there. Well, I guess it's kind of like a good news, bad news kind of thing. Well, while we did not get very much rain at all, unfortunately, I, we were predicted like three to four inches. Uh, I think we got maybe a half an inch, but I guess with what little bit of rain we did get, it's kind of brought the grass back to life just a little bit, and the alpacas didn't want to come up and eat, which is really strange because usually they come running when I shake a feed bucket, and now that I've got the goats out, when I turn the goats out to let them graze, I always feed a little bit so the alpacas don't get bullied and pushed around. So, bringing them a little bucket of feed to the back pasture where they're just grazing right now. Hey, girls. Dolly, Tina. I see Lucy way back there in the back. Y'all want to come eat? Come on, Dolly. Well, it's not much, but you can see the grass is just really trying to take that, take advantage of what little bit of rain we had and get a little bit of green. And I'm sure that's uh, what they're out there nibbling on. They're just slowly making their way up here to eat. Earl, 
squirrel, you're going to get spit on, buddy. Ready to go to the next spot? Earl, let's go. Come on. You know, I feel like during a long, hot drought like we've had this year, having that lucky buck mineral out can't do anything but help the deer herd. Whether it grows big, giant antlers on deer this year or not, I don't know. But when the animals are stressed like they are due to huh, lack of rain and nutrient depleted food sources, it doesn't hurt to add that mineral into their diet. I mean, I know they're wildlife and they'll survive without it, but it's just like livestock. If you uh, leave those minerals and vitamins out of their diet, they don't thrive as well. So it can't hurt. Well, as you can see with the pond, we did not get near enough rain to catch any water. There may be a few inches in the bottom, but we had zero runoff with our half inch of rainfall or so we've had. But he's back today on the dozer working on the emergency spillway. So we do have a spillway pipe that when the, when the level of the pond fills up, it'll flow into that pipe and drain out. But we don't want that to be our only spillway. So at one end of the dam, he's using a laser transit to basically put an emergency spillway that's about six inches above where water will flow into the pipe. So if that gets clogged up, it'll still go out and around the dam if the pipe gets clogged. But I've got to work on some other stuff while I'm here. And part of that has to do with the, the power kit, that EcoFlow power kit that I installed in the cabin, I don't know, a few weeks ago. I'm working on trying to get everything hooked up so we can power this thing on solar power because that's one way that this power kit can be recharged to give us power in the cabin so that's something i've been working on for a few days i actually went out and rented a trencher from gp rents and trenched in about i don't know 80 feet or so of underground trench then buried a conduit and ran my wire through i bought some some uh solar wire off of Amazon to basically get us from the cabin out to where our solar panels are out here in the sun because there is zero sun that hits the cabin and I like it that way because it keeps the cabin cooler but no solar power it'd be a lot easier if we could just put solar panels on the roof of this thing and we don't have to worry about trenching lines and burying cables and all that stuff but I've got all that part done but I feel like I probably need to, need to go into a little bit more detail on this EcoFlow power kit because this is, this it actually really is an awesome little system. So like I said, a few weeks ago, you guys watched me install this power kit into basically what is an off-grid cabin. And now we have lights installed. We, we have outlets to plug things when we're out here working. We can charge batteries. I've got my little portable air conditioner. It's not super... Uh, hot outside today so i haven't been running this but let me turn the temperature down we'll turn her on this is plugged into the power kit and basically if i'm gonna turn the ac on i might as well shut the door right so everything is a plug and play install i've got two big batteries the power hub a breaker box i'm not gonna take it all apart and show you everything Go back and watch that video if you want to check it out. But everything runs into this system. And right now we're, my AC's powering up. We're only 
running about 253 watts. As soon as that compressor kicks on, it usually runs about 600 watts. I don't have any power coming in because we're still working on the solar, but that's what's cool about this little power kit. So with this system, you're able to choose how you want to power whatever you're using it for. So this power kit could be used for a cabin, it could be used for a van build, a, a small RV, you could convert a bus. Um, I actually watched a, another channel the other day, I think it's called Ambition Strikes, and they have this big giant like deuce and a half military truck, and they installed one of these in their military truck to use as like a service vehicle. And they're able to power a small welder, air compressors, all kinds of stuff so that they can do projects on their property because they bought like a big giant bulldozer that breaks down every other day and they have to work on it a lot. So that power kit gives them power to do that. But for me specifically, in this little small off-grid cabin type setup, um, it gives me those features, those creature comforts of home in a cabin, like lights on a switch, like that, and a small air conditioner. Now, we're not trying to build a house here. We're not trying to make this a full living quarters, but if I want my family to be comfortable, or when my family comes over here, I do want them to be comfortable. Now, since we haven't fully completed the solar charging system, uh, and it's like completely cloudy and overcast, and there's not gonna be much power coming through those solar panels on a very cloudy day, there are multiple ways to charge this system up, and that's what's great about like, if you had it in a van or a bus, you can wire it into your alternator and charge <laughs> pretty rapidly, but, you can do solar, you can do the alternator, you can do, like if you had this set up in your shop, you could plug it into a 110 outlet and charge it that way and then use it, you know, use cer certain circuits for certain things. But what's gonna work, I think, really great for us is this right here. So while we're at the cabin and we're using, you know, like the air conditioner is a power hog, obviously, or if we're using a lot of different stuff, we need to be able to charge this thing with more than just solar with what solar array we have. So that's where a generator comes in. I've got this little small Predator generator. I'm gonna fire it up real quick. It's super quiet and I'm able to charge my system while I'm using it. See, this little generator is very quiet, but that allows me to um, plug directly it allows me to plug directly into the 110 charging port. And here we go, look at here. We're, we're, our generator's kicking in. It keeps coming up. My AC went shut down for a second. So let's get that cranked up high. Temperature turned down low. And as that generator cranks up power, see we're putting in almost a thousand watts and only using 130 watts right now. So basically it'll show you everything you need to know. You can come in here, turn on which ways you want to power it. Um, so alternator, solar, or 110, which I'm using my generator for. And right now it says it'll be fully recharged in 44 minutes. Now this is an AC and DC system. I don't have the DC hooked up right now. It's got several circuits in there for AC and DC. So depending on your power needs and what you're wanting to run, you can run several different circuits and then EcoFlow has their app. And the cool thing about that is you could run outdoor, so your outdoor lights like these string lights on a circuit. You could run some indoor lights on its own circuit and a few different things, whatever you want to do. And then when you're in the app, it'll allow you to turn on and off certain circuits from your phone. So if you were laying in bed at the cabin and you forgot to turn off the lights outside, boom, you can do it from your phone. Or you're laying in bed and you hear something outside at night, boom, you can turn on the lights from your phone. So there's a lot of reasons why I think you should look into one of these EcoFlow power kits. It's all plug and play, super easy install. It's very safe. There's not a whole lot to it. It's basically just plugging things in. It's super convenient for this little off-grid cabin like this, or if you had you know, your shop, if you don't wanna run power all the way out to your shop, I know sometimes that costs a lot of money, 
It's got the smart control system that you can control through your app or the touch screen here in the room. I mean, there's just a lot of things about this that makes this little small cabin like a really cool place to be. And I mean cool with EcoFlow air conditioners too, so. <laughs> I'm not doing this because I'm a prepper or anything. I know a lot of people, that's why they want this kind of stuff. We're just doing it to have <clears throat> some comforts of home in a little small cabin. And I think this EcoFlow power kit is the way to go. So EcoFlow power kits are a great addition to your toolkit, whether for outdoor, indoor, or travel use. They're easy to install. Modern solutions provide you with solar energy on the go every time. So you guys know that we've partnered with EcoFlow for quite a while now and they've brought us some incredible products. But having partners like EcoFlow allows us to be able to do projects like we're doing right now with the pond. That's an expensive project, so a huge thank you to them. Be sure, if you're interested in any of the EcoFlow products, such as the power kit like we installed in this cabin, the EcoFlow Wave air conditioner, their little portable power units like the, the EcoFlow uh, Delta series, they're all top-notch stuff. Be sure to check the link in the description box and go check them all out. So the guys that were uh, digging my pond asked if I had any other projects to do before they hauled the excavator out of here. And I said, well, I do have a, a really unsightly trash pile. Most of the stuff's probably been here for a decade or longer. And uh, he said, well, we can just bury it. I thought about getting a big roll off dumpster, but it would take probably at least three big loads from the, the big roll off dumpsters and just make a mess and kind of trash everywhere. So basically he's digging a big trench beside the pile and then we'll just push everything off into it and cover it with a couple feet of dirt not the best option but some of these old farms just have old junk piles it's just it just the, it is what it is and uh most of it is yeah i mean old old furniture there's like washers and dryers and just trash some of it's just bags of trash some jobs it's just better for me to stay out of the way and this is one of them so you can see he's got his transit stick all mounted on the front of his dozer blade and he's working with that laser level to uh, ensure that the emergency spillway is at the right height so that tripod right there is a laser transit and it shoots a laser that that the stick on the front of his dozer blade picks up and he's able to set his blade at just the right height so that he can work this emergency spillway out so that we never lose our dam in case of a major flood because we've had some pretty major floods in the past. say somebody threw away everything but the kitchen sink but there's the kitchen sink so I know this isn't the uh, the best thing in the world to do with your old trash but there's just so much and uh, 
up. It's been here for years and years and years. Look, there's an old milk can with a mailbox. Looks like a small old deep freeze. What's left of a Sony TV. He dug one heck of a hole, and that is solid rock, probably 12 feet deep right there. I don't know if we're going to need all of it, but... not even showing this on the channel because it was just such a mess it was just trash but you know realistically this is just part of buying property it's just part of what you inherit and there's probably been trash thrown in this ditch for 20 30 years maybe more and it needs to be cleaned up and while we've got the equipment here we're going to do that i mean it, yes we're burying it they're burying it. i mean they dug a hole here 10 12 feet deep in solid rock We'll pile it all in there, pack it down in there, bury it, cover the topsoil. Basically the same thing as a landfill, except this is all just stuff that's already been laying here for decades. I hope he doesn't drive that off in the hole. Ninety nine percent charge. We're gonna go ahead and shut her down for the day. So as you can see, we've got a lot going on on this new property and a lot of work going into it, a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of energy going into it, but it's starting to look so much different. I mean, now I from standing right here at the cabin, I can look up, I can see all the way across the pond dam and hopefully We'll get some rain in the near future to fill that thing on up. We didn't catch any rain out of the last showers. There was no runoff water, but uh, but that's all right. I didn't expect to fill it up the very next day after we built the pond, and especially when we haven't had rain since uh, May. But that's all right. It is what it is. Pond's coming along. Cabin's coming along. Property's coming along. It's fun. I love it. This place is awesome. It's incredible, and it's so neat to see it transformed from what it was into what it can be and what it what it is now. So anyways, I'm gonna go up and check up on the trash pile. As you can see, they're just pushing everything off. They basically dug a big long trench, pushing everything off into it, and then they'll use the dozer and that excavator to, to pack everything in to compact that trash down. And then we'll cover it back up with topsoil where you can't even see it. And if we can get a foot or two of soil over the top of that trash, no one will ever know it was there. Oh, poop. <laughs> They're making a mess, but it'll look good when they're done. 
I have a question though. When's the last time you've seen one of these three liter bottles? You remember when they had the external plastic bottom on them? I haven't seen one of these since I was a little kid. It's even got a metal lid on it. these guys to it and let them do their job and finish filling that ditch in and i figure within a few months after a couple rains and get a little bit of grass growing you'll never know that trash pile was there but uh another project knocked off the list what a day what a busy day so many different things going on try to get it all done at once and you just can't there's no reason to try to get it all done one at once i guess but <sighs> i gotta go pick up Houston from school it's about 10 till 3 and uh, we're gonna find something else to do for the evening got all our work done for the day <sighs> huge 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 thank you to ecoflow for sponsoring today's video be sure to check them out links in the description box um it's it's awesome to be able to get to do what we do and pour money into a project like this a property like this to make it uh beautiful again probably restore it to what it once was anyways guys that's all i've got for today thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it you guys have a great day and as always we'll see you on the next video